All right, good morning. It's time to move on to the next type of electron configuration. And this one's called the quantum mechanical model. Um, in the case of this, the interesting piece on this is you might say, well, man, why, didn't, why don't we learn this one instead of learning uh, the other one, the Bohr model that we did with the 2, 6, 10, and 14 model. The reality is that that model is uh, an old design as to how electrons are arranged inside of an atom. Um, but I do find that it's an easier transition from what you may have already known concerning uh, electrons, because we think of them as the idea that they cruise around in a circle, like the uh, planets orbit the sun. Um, but what we're going to find out now is that's not what they do. They don't orbit uh, the nucleus like the planets do the sun. They, they uh, actually move more in a very random motion. They're like all over the place. But we can actually identify where they are, even though it's a random motion. I know that sounds crazy, because how can you know where something is if it's a random motion? By the time we get done with these notes, hopefully you'll have an understanding of this. Yeah, I will tell you, it's a really, really, really complicated um, concept. But the awesome piece to it is I really believe that by the time you get done with this, you'll be like, oh, I get this. And the, a neat thing that I learned in another uh, thing that I saw is that only uh, less than 1% of society understands what we're going to talk about right now. And when we get all done with this, you will be one of that 1% because you will understand how to do this. And again, it's not that bad to do. So what this quantum mechanical model is, is it actually came from the study of light. By studying light, that's how they came up with this idea as to where these electrons are located at. And what we need to do is um, we need to make a model. I'm going to draw an electron configuration of one that we already did or possibly done, and that's going to be iron. So if I do iron, which has 26 and look it up there, 56. All right. So if I do the nucleus, and the reality is right now, we're not going to worry about the nucleus, actually. We're only going to worry about the electron configuration. So this guy's got 26 electrons. Let's see, I think I can go one more. So this guy with 26 is 2, 2, 6. 2, 6, 2, there's 20, and then we have 6 down there, okay? So that's the arrangement that this thing works. Um, now, this uh, quantum mechanical model, there should be a page on the Canvas page that you can download, and what it actually looks like, and you're going to hear a little bit of a um, fan motion in the background, but I tested it, and I think you can still hear me as long as I talk loud enough. So, what it looks like, looks like this. So... And let's see, I'm going to move this over so it's not overlapping my thing. There we go. All right. And what this quantum mechanical model does is it gives a better representation as to where these electrons are. All right. And what's interesting is you look at it and you go, oh, my word, that thing looks really complicated. But it's not really that complicated. Okay. Um, what it is is you already know it by having done this model over here. Because each one of these boxes, what each one of those boxes does is it holds two electrons. That's the most you can put in any box. So this box here holds two, this one up here holds two, this guy holds two, that one holds two, this one holds two, that one, this one, that one. Every single one of these boxes, the most it can ever hold is two electrons. Okay? And what ends up happening in this is that if you take this piece of paper and turn it sideways, like this, actually, let me take it over. So, matches up with what we've done. Sorry. I'm doing everything backwards here. Alright, there we go. So what we end up having is these boxes right across here, those are my twos. That's actually all of these guys right here. And then we have these groups of three boxes. And remember each box holds two, so two, four, six. So these happen to go here where those sixes are. And then these boxes down here, those ones are gonna normally would hold how many? 10. So these boxes down here where that bright light is, uh, those guys hold 10. Because if you notice, there are five boxes in that one. And then there's actually two sets of boxes way down here. And those, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven times two, that's 14. Oh, look at that. 
That's the two, six, 10, 14 rows. Okay. So it's just a different way of representing what we've already done over here. Okay. Um, now, in order to represent these guys, and what I'm going to do is move this thing up a little bit. Mm. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to put these things in here. In order to put them in there, what I need to do is i got to put my electrons in here and put them in the way we represent them as we put an arrow. And the arrow looks like this. Now, I'm going to make this bigger over on the side. And uh, chemists, what we are, we are extremely efficient. We don't like to waste a lot of time. So in making an arrow that you may be used to, so there's an arrow that you'd be used to. The only thing is, is we don't like to, again, make, waste a lot of time, so we get rid of this part right here. And say, you know what? That's good enough. That represents an arrow. All right, so we've got an arrow going up, and then we can have an arrow going down. And ultimately, when you do this, you're going to find you're going to be, oh my gosh, I'm glad I don't have to write that extra line because it takes way too much time to draw that extra line. I know that sounds really crazy, but you will find it's kind of obnoxious writing them all. So in that first one, which happens to be this box over here, we're going to draw two arrows, right? And this one, see, yep, you can see that. All right. So that gives me this box now is done, right? Now we go to this next box, which happens to be this next area right here. And we are going to put two arrows there. So that's this one. The next thing that we would have filled would be the spot where we put the sixes in. And if you notice, as we work our way across, there's the next thing, which is the three boxes. Now, the way in which these things have to be filled, according to a rule, is there has to be one in each box first. So I put one in each box first. Then I go back and put the second one in. So then there's second, one, second, one, second one. You might look at it and go, oh, man, Mr. Pape, does it really matter if I wouldn't put two, 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 or I put one, 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 one? Well, what if we only had three? Well, if I only had three, then if you did it as two, one, that is incorrect. It has to be done in this form. It has to be done so it's one, one, one. In a moment, I'll explain that to you as to why it has to be done that way. Right? Um, just hold on for a second, and we'll get to it. So. So we got to do one, one, one. Then I do second one, second one, second one. That happens to be this six. So that six is done. The next thing we would have done would be the two. Oh, look at that. So come over here. There's the two. So I put one, two. Then we go down. So that's this box. Now we go down, we do a six. Oh, look at There's my next group of three. So one, one, one. Second one, second one, second one. All right, so that's that. Now we go up to here, we do a two. And look, there's my next box. So that's a two. Okay, then now we go down to this spot, which should hold 10, and we only got six. Well, what you have to see is it's not this set of boxes. This is my next set of boxes that I would come to if I worked my way across. So now this is where, again, it's real important to go ones. So I go one, 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 one. There's five. And then I put a second one in any one of them. It really doesn't matter which one. So only one of them has two, and all the rest of them have singles in there. So this is the electron configuration for iron, right? Now, after we've done this, now we have to do this thing called the spectroscopic number, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to write that. Um, let's see, I'm going to erase this over here. And we'll put it over here since this is turned sideways. Now, the way in which this thing works is this spot right here, this is called an S orbital. And all these ones across the top are called S orbitals. These ones that have sixes, those are called p orbitals. The ones that have tens, those are called d orbitals. And the ones down here that have 14s, they're called f orbitals. And they're actually numbered based on the uh, uh, ring, the energy level that you happen to be in. So we go to this first one, and it happens to be, let's see, we're going to go 1s. So it's one s, and then how many electrons are in there? There are two. So what we have is 1s2, let me make sure you can see that, yep, okay. Now I don't want you to think this is a mathematical expression, it's not 1s squared, it's not 1 times s squared, it is first energy level, s orbital, and two electrons, that's all it says, okay. So we've got this one, now we go to the next one, which happens to be 2s2, second energy level, s orbital, two electrons. Then the next one we filled was this, which will be... 2p, and then we put six electrons in there. 
So that's second energy level, p orbital, six electrons. All right, now I'm gonna jump down just because I'm running out of space. So now we go to the next one, which would be three, s, two. That was this spot. The next one I did was this, which is three, p, six. Then we go up to this one, which is four, s, two. And the last one we did was this guy down here, which was three, b, It'll hold 10, but remember we only put six in there, so we go 3D6. All right, that's the spectroscopic numbers of it. Now there's this other one called abbreviated. And what abbreviated means is when you shorten something, make it shorter, right? And all these elements happen to fall into, they, they have somewhere in them an element that looks like a noble gas. What the noble gases are, I'm gonna come down here, you can see me again, are, these guys that are tan along the edge over here, they are the noble gases. And what noble gases actually have is their outermost ring is filled to eight. With one exception, helium, he's got two. All the rest of these guys have eight. So somewhere inside of this diagram, there's actually a noble gas, right? And what, the way in which we can find this is, let's go to the one that we did, which was iron. So iron is right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the element that's less than iron. So really what we're doing is we're gonna come back across here to potassium, then we go back up and we would hit argon. Well, another way in which I like to describe this is take iron, go all the way across to the far left and then go up one and we're gonna use argon. And argon, which has 18 electrons, there are 18 electrons in here. If I would have had you draw argon, what we would have drawn is we would have drawn two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So what we were drawn is this area right here. And that is argon, right? So argon is represented in here. It's these other two and six electrons that make this iron, make it go beyond. So what we can do is we can put in parentheses, AR meaning argon, that's what's in a circle. And then all we gotta do is add the stuff that's outside which is 4, S, 2, 3, E, 6. So we've got 18 electrons represented by argon. And then we just gotta add 2 and 6 to make this iron, which expands it out to get it all the way to that element. All right, I know this is confusing. Right? It's a lot different, but again, like I said, it's really just a model just like um, what we did before, where we had the twos, the sixes, the tens, and the 14s. And again, remember those top ones up there, which go up the side of the paper, and you turn it the other way. Those are the twos, then you got the sixes, then you got the tens, and then you got the 14s. And the only reason I turned the paper sideways is so that you can see the twos, the sixes, the tens, and the 14s. Okay. And normally this paper would be turned vertical, it'd be vertically. Then you would have the twos, the sixes, the tens, and the 14s going up. But if you want to, when you do it, if you want to turn it sideways, that's fine. As for these arrows, doesn't matter which way they go. You just gotta make sure that they always point opposite each other, right? So if the first one goes up, next one's gotta go down. First one goes down, next one's gotta go up. If the first one goes this way, then the other one's gotta go that way. If the first one goes that way, then the other one's gotta go that way. Right? They always gotta face opposite directions. So one thing that I don't want you to do is don't make your arrows like that, right? Let me put that in a spot that there isn't that shine. Don't make it two lines, because right? that doesn't tell me which way they're spinning. It's got to be an arrow and an arrow, okay? so that we know that they're spinning opposite of each other. Right? Well, let's see. I'm going to stop this, and we're going to go part number two, because I'm just about out of my 15 minutes.